why I am a Buddhist. Some people say that Buddhism is just an Eastern religion. This is what some Christians in the West say. They say that because Buddhism is an Eastern religion, it cannot be understood and practiced by people in the West. Such Christians forget that Christianity itself is of Eastern origin. But Buddhism is, in fact, not an Eastern religion. It is a universal religion. Even though Buddhism originated in India, it spread all over the whole earth. Buddhism can be understood and practiced anywhere in the world because Buddhism addresses itself to the individual human being, regardless of race, nationality, caste, sex, or age. Buddhism is therefore the religion of man. This is one of the reasons why I am a Buddhist. I believe that humanity is basically one. I believe that it is possible for any human being to communicate with any other human being, to feel for any other human being, to be friends with any other human being. This is what I truly and deeply believe. This belief is part of my own experience. It is part of my own life. It is part of me. I cannot live without this belief, and I would rather that die than give it up. To me, to live means to practice this belief. Therefore, this belief is part of my religion. It has nothing to do with the way in which I dress, nothing to do with what I call myself. It is a matter of the way I am, the way I exist. It is the way I naturally function in the world. This is what religion really is. It is what you most truly and deeply believe. It is what you are prepared to die for. It is your life. It is what makes you what you are. It is what makes you behave in the way you do. Religion is therefore a very important thing. In fact, it is the most important thing. So uh, those were the words of Sangrachita, who we uh, call Bante. And uh, yeah, so we're get, tonight we're going to talk a bit about Bante and celebrate uh, what is his birthday, 26th of August. So a very warm welcome to you, if you're tuning, wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, my name is Virian Argo, so I'm one of the teachers of the Brixton Buddhist community. And I'm joined uh, today at Afrospace by Amra Pushpa, uh, who's here to uh, run the uh, ritual with me, and also Adam as well, who's uh, taking care of our tech tonight. So really, uh, really glad you could join us, really glad you're tuning in. Uh, if you are, well, wherever you're tuning in from, uh, let us know in the chat room, say hi, and uh, let us know where you're tuning in from, uh, and I'll give you a little shout out before we get going tonight. So uh, yeah, so this is uh, the 26th of August, uh, currently 26th of August 2020, but um, every year for the last 18 years we've celebrated uh, Bante Sangrachita's birthday uh, with a 108 year puja, meaning that we're going to do this puja annually, this ritual annually every uh, year for 108 years. So I think we finished some, sometime in 2111, which is a bit, bit, bit mad, really. That's sort of starting something that's going to go on or beyond our lifetimes, I think. Uh, of course, many of you may know that Bhante Sangrakachu is the founder of the Tri Ratna Buddhist community, or B the Tri Ratna Buddhist order in particular. And uh, yes, uh, what he started is this small organization uh, well over 50 years ago has uh, ballooned into a worldwide. A Buddhist community with uh, hundreds of Buddhist centers across the world, uh, almost on every continent except for Antarctica yet, and uh, yeah, thousands of ordained members, uh, potentially reaching uh, millions of people over the over the fifty years, 
uh, with uh, meditation and Dharma teaching. So um, we're here really to celebrate and to rejoice in uh, well, uh, Bante's um, contribution to that, you know, as the founder of the movement, as someone who has uh, helped uh, create a kind of coherent spiritual uh, path for us to follow. Uh, he was a great scholar, a great writer. Uh, he famously said that he wasn't the best man to start a Buddhist movement, but it's what needed to be done. Uh, but uh, the consequence of his uh, life and work has uh, created this incredible legacy for for us and for well for the world really so we're going to celebrate a bit of that we'll have some readings and we'll do some uh, a ritual together uh, part to rejoice in in that uh, i mean f you, you may have a close relationship with uh, bante you may have never met him you may not know him it may just be a name to you but if you're um well if you're tuning in but if it, uh it's certainly true that you've had something to do with him, but if you, uh, well, if you've been part of the community for a while, uh, you may, you may not quite realise how uh, significant his influence. Well, it can't be overstated really how important his influence was uh, to the, well, to the creation of our, our community. So yes, a rather remarkable man. Uh, sometimes a quite controversial man, but a remark remarkable man uh, nonetheless. Um, Yes, and he's left, left us this wonderful legacy, and uh, yeah, we'll just be appreciating him, what he's given to us in his life and work. So I'm not going to, we'll do a, a, a ritual tonight, so I'm not going to explain it uh, a lot tonight. Um, so if you're new to Buddhist ritual and you want to understand a bit more about it, you may want to check out some of our other videos uh, at first. Particularly, I can recommend... Uh, the Buddha Day celebration that we did earlier in the year, uh, the ritual. Uh, so I go into a bit more detail about Buddhist ritual there. So, but tonight we're just going to sort of get on with it in a way. So, uh, for those of you that do know puja and have uh, done uh, ritual before, we'll do a sevenfold puja tonight, and there'll be a readings, a uh, well, reading and uh, a poem uh, from Bante, and um, there will also be uh, five uh, mantras. In the, in the um, yeah, during the course of the puja, sort of interlaced in, in between. And these um, mantras uh, are there to kind of bring into the room the various Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that Bhante uh, in particular had a connection with. So he, he um, undertook visualization practices or he had a spiritual connection with these figures. So these five mantras were particularly uh, recited uh, around the time of his death and will continue to be part of his, uh, what well, associated with him uh, in particular. So we'll just do, we'll do those tonight, those five mantras. And um, the whole ritual, uh, except for a couple of points, will be in uh, call and response. So I will just uh, lead the puja and uh, lead some of the mantras and, and push will lead some of the mantras as well. And then um, uh, there'll be a response from Adam and Amra Pushpa, and you can just join in at home uh, with that response. And uh, with the mantras, uh, yeah, you just join in with those if you want, and yeah, at any point you can uh, make offerings. We'll be making offerings here as well, and uh, you can just make offerings at home if you want to. So I would yeah encourage you if you want to participate, uh, you know, get in front of a shrine or build a little shrine for you. Maybe put a Buddha figure down or a picture of Bante. Uh, and uh, yeah, gather up any offerings you, you want to make and just uh, maybe set yourself up uh, to just engage with uh, this ritual that we're going to do tonight. Um, they're always fairly mysterious rituals, so uh, I always go into them uh, thinking I've sort of done them loads of times and uh, they constantly sort of surprise me. So just uh, I've learned to just enter into it in the spirit of it, just with a spirit of openness and the spirit of uh, interest and wonder and see what pops out. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, it's the 18th year of doing this, so there's quite a lineage, quite a bit of energy that we've built up. So we're part of a lineage of people that have done this uh, particular ritual for the last 18 years and will continue on to the future. And there's actually some items on the shrine tonight that are connected with that, uh, a collection of items. So there's a little chest here, and this uh, chest stores the items for this ritual. So each Buddhist center uh, has one of these chests and they're all the same and they've got the same items in it and they um, every year we uh, get it out dust it off and uh, open it up just for this particular ritual and inside that chest 
Uh, there's a number of objects, there's a number of pictures of Bhante, so we can bring him to mind. So here he is uh, below the Buddha on the shrine. There's a special candle, I don't know if you can see that candle, uh, there's a special candle. And this candle is, uh, lives in the box and we only take it out and we light it just for, the, just for this um, ritual. So uh, I've been told it's a candle that will burn for 108 hours, so it should be enough to get us through. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a special candle that we just use for this ritual. Uh, and what else do we have on the shrine? Well, just flowers as well to offer candles, uh, op offerings as well, and actually incense. So uh, we won't be using incense today, but also there's uh, enough incense uh, in the box to uh, celebrate that. And actually, usually, it's a bit, um, we're doing it for the first time this year uh, online, but um, usually there's a, well, there's a book in the box, and everyone who participates in the ritual uh, that year can sign the book, and uh, also there's a photograph as well. Uh, that, that's done. So um, Amra Pushpa and I and Adam will sign the book today on your behalf uh, and we'll, write, we'll just write, uh, write in it who was there. And um, yeah, we'll take, a, we'll take a picture at the end as well. So you, you're there sort of in spirit, you'll be in the book in spirit uh, this year. But you know, fingers crossed next year we'll be able to gather again in uh, large numbers and we'll be able to uh, well, continue this uh, great lineage. So, uh, yeah, so that's all I kind of want to say. Uh, when we're doing the um, ritual, yeah, you can just, whether you know Bantu or not, uh, you could just try to get in touch with uh, perhaps a, a sense of appreciation or gratitude of uh, things that you appreciate, maybe about the movement or uh, how the Dharma's touched your life and perhaps what, what uh, place Bante has uh, played in that. Uh, you can also perhaps wish him well. So although he's now... Uh, he's now dead, he's now passed away. Uh, we don't know where he is, where his uh, consciousness is. Uh, and we can just uh, wish him well, uh, whatever uh, continuation of that energy or uh, consciousness there may be, uh, there may be left in, in, uh, in reality. So I might just go over to Adam and see who we've got joining us tonight. Let's give you a few shout outs before we get on with the puja. So Adam, who have we got joining us tonight? Hi everybody, yeah, so we have Charlotte, uh, hey Charlotte. we have Thanks Ken James. tuning in. Great, great, okay. great to have you here, Kalpana, great to have you here. Yeah. Uh, Amla Vajra tuning in from Somerset. Hey, great news, you could join us, Amla uh, Vajra. We've got Amla Dana. Hey, good old Amla Dana. Uh, we yeah. have Ben, uh, Ben Hoff from uh, Shepherd's Heart near Lewis. Oh, very nice, I'm very jealous. Yeah, very <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for joining us, Ben. Yeah. And lastly, we have uh, Alex uh, B. Uh, tuning in from Clapham Junction. Great, less glamorous than the Shepherd's Hut, but great to have you here anyway. Okay, good. Okay, great, so that's us at the moment. So you can um, uh, imaginatively uh, bring people to mind. And of course, lots of people watch this video after the event as well on catch up. So you can just uh, imaginatively bring people, bring people you know in the Sangha into your room, into your space with you, and uh, get this sense of uh, doing puja together. Uh, which we are, of course, even though we're uh, slightly removed. And uh, I'm not going to make a big uh, thing around um, donations and dana tonight, other than just to encourage you, if you feel moved to, do give. Uh, we do continually need financial support to keep everything running and to keep these activities running, uh, hire the space and so on. Um, so yeah, if you want to, uh, we'll really uh, thank you to our rep people that give regularly, give monthly. If you feel moved to make a monthly standing order to us or a monthly direct debit, that would be really fantastic. But maybe you just want to put a bit of uh, dharma or a bit, make a donation just for tonight. Uh, and Adam will put a link in the description about how you can uh, do that if you want to. Okay, so um, I'll just give you a very short rundown of the rough order and then we'll just get started. Um, so in a moment we'll salute the shrine. Uh, I'm going to read a long um, reading um, from uh, a piece of writing Bante did uh, God, like ages ago, like 28 years ago or something. Um, uh, about um, he gave he gave this bit of reading on the 20th anniversary of the order, so it'll be over 30 years now. And um, what is it's called my history of going for refuge and. In a certain way, it sums up a bit of his journey. I mean, he's got four volumes of memoirs, so I'd really encourage you to read them. They're absolutely incredible memoirs, the incredible life he's lived. But I'm hoping this will give you a bit of a taste of it. So it's fairly uh, substantial, so bear with me, but uh, interesting. And then Amra Pushpa is going to uh, read one of Bante's poems to us, a very uh, famous poem called The Wind. 
and then we'll proceed with the uh, puja. And after each verse of the sevenfold puja, there'll be either a mantra or there'll be the refuges and precepts or there'll be the heart sutra. And then uh, we'll close at the end of the day with the closing mantras. And at the end, I'll just ring a bell and we won't say anything else. We'll just end the stream there and you can just uh, sit on at home if you want to. So I hope that all makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. Uh, we'll take you through the whole, uh, the whole, the whole event. Um, yeah, really good to be doing this. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, um, I'll salute the shrine. Um, we'll do that in call and response. And then we'll uh, begin the ritual tonight. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Dhammaya. Namo Dhammaya. Namo Sanghaya. Namo Sanghaya. Namo Nama. Namo. My going for refuge began with an experience of the truth taught by the Buddha in the Diamond Sutra, and to a lesser degree by the sixth patriarch of the Sutra of Wei Lang. As a result of that experience, I realised that I was a Buddhist, and always had been one, and two years later signalised the fact by formally taking the three refuges and the five precepts from a Burmese monk in London. Being a Buddhist, I wanted to live and work as a Buddhist. This was hardly possible in the army, in which I had been at this time cons cons conscripted, and with which I eventually travelled to the East. Nor was it possible in any of the various Indian religious organisations and groups with which I had become associated with after leaving the army. Disillusioned with both of them and worldly life, I therefore resolved to follow the personal example of the Buddha and renounce the household life for the life of homelessness. After going forth in this way, I spent two years as a freelance Buddhist ascetic, mainly in South India. The experience served to deepen my understanding of the Dharma and strengthened me in my conviction that I was a Buddhist, and I therefore decided that the time had come for me to regularise my position by taking formal ordination as a Buddhist monk. Returning to North East India, I was ordained first as a Shramanera, or novice, and then, a year and a half later, as a Bhikshi, or full monk. By this time I had settled in Kalimpong, in the eastern Himalayas, and whether in Kalampong or anywhere else, being a monk had both its advantages and its disadvantages. On one hand, it meant that I was able to feel fully and, as it were, officially committed to the spiritual life. On the other, it meant I was in danger of thinking that I was fully committed to the spiritual life just because I was a monk. I was in danger of confusing commitment with lifestyle as I indeed did do for a while, at least to some extent. Moreover, I soon discovered that in becoming a monk, I had, not become, I had become not a member of a spiritual community, 
but only a member of a particular socio-religious group or a subdivision of such a group. So that's an important element, that of Kalyana Mitrata, or spiritual friendship, was almost entirely lacking in my life. Nonetheless, the feeling of going for refuge was there underneath the ashes and blazed up whenever the eight worldly winds happened to blow upon me more strongly than was their wont. Indeed, it blazed more brightly and more continuously in every year that passed. This was not due to so much to the eight worldly winds as to my increasingly close contact with Tibetan Buddhism, especially as represented by certain incarnate lamas and by the Nyingmapa version of the going for refuge and prostration practice. As a result of that contact, I came to have better appreciation of the meaning and significance of going for refuge. That is to say, a better appreciation of the fact that going for refuge was not just a formality, nor even a means to the arising of the bodhicitta, but the central and definitive act of the Buddhist life, of which the bodhicitta was the altruistic dimension. At the same time, as a result of my contact with the newly converted ex-untouchable Buddhists, and in my taking bodhisattva ordination, I came closer to seeing that monasticism and spiritual life were not identical. Thus, by the time I returned to England in 1964, I had realised that it was going for refuge that made one a Buddhist. That going for refuge was, in fact, the central act of the Buddhist life, from which all other Buddhist acts derived their significance. That it meant organising one's life around the three jewels. And that it constituated the fundamental basis of unity amongst Buddhists. In England, it did not take me long to discover that although conditions there were favourable to the spread of the Dharma, a new Buddhist movement was badly needed. A movement was needed that would have at its heart and centre not a society, but a spiritual community and which would be free from the infection of Theravadan pseudo-monastic triumphalism. On the 7th of April 1968, I therefore founded the Western Buddhist Order, later the Tree Ratna Buddhist Order, by conferring uh, Upasaka Upaksika ordination, as it was then called, on nine men and three women. Or rather, the Western Buddhist Order came into existence when nine men and three women committed themselves to the path of the Buddha by publicly taking the refuges and ten precepts from me in the traditional manner. The fact that they took the refuges and precepts from me, or were, or were ordained by me, meant that their understanding of the meaning of going for refuge coincided with mine, at least to some extent. It meant, in other words, that I had in some degree succeeded in sharing my understanding of the meaning of going for refuge with them. And in the course of the years that followed, I succeeded in sharing that understanding directly and indirectly with more and more people, so that not counting the three who have unfortunately died and the 20 or so members that have fallen away, there are at present, this is in 1988, in the world, 330 seven members of the Western Buddhist Order, or Triloka Buddha Mahasangha, the Indian wing of the movement. The language of conferring and taking, and even of sharing, should not be construed too literally. It should certainly not be construed in such a way as to suggest that in sharing my understanding of the meaning of going for refuge with the 12 original members of the Order, I was sharing with them a certain fixed quality of understanding, so to speak, which therefore remained unchanged. After the founding of the Western Buddhist Order, the meaning and significance of going for refuge became clearer to me than ever. And I started to perceive some of the deeper and more philosophical implications of that central and defining act of the Buddhist life. In particular, I saw that going for refuge, 
took place within a context far wider than that of the individual's personal experience, as well as on a number of different levels. I also saw the full extent of the difference between the old cultural and ethnic going for refuge, as represented by the vast majority of Southeastern Asian Buddhists, and the new, more conscious and individual going for refuge, as represented by members of the Western Buddhist order. Eventually, when the order had been in existence for some 15 or 16 years, I saw that the majority of its members had organised their lives around the Three Jewels to such an extent that there was now little or no resemblance between them and the Upasakas or lay Buddhists of the East. Indeed, it had become impossible to regard them as belonging to any traditional socio-religious categories. They were neither monks nor laymen, neither male or female novices, nor male or female lay devotees. They were simply Buddhists, or individuals who had gone to refuge to the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, and who, as a meaning of giving expression to the act of their everyday lives, undertook to observe the ten precepts, that is, undertook to observe the ten great ethical principles that in fact construed the Mulla Pratimoksha, or fundamental moral code, of monks and laymen alike. For such mere Buddhists, who were mere Buddhists in much the same way as the followers of the Yogacara school were Chinta Matrins, or mere consciousnessists, a new name was clearly needed, preferably one drawn from tradi traditional sources. First in India and then in the West, therefore, it was decided that future Upas is Upasakas should be known as Dharmacharis and Upasikas as Dharmacharinis, Dharma ferrets, or practitioners of the Dharma. That the change in the nomenclature should have originally been adopted in India was perhaps not surprising, as the writing of Ambedkar and Buddhism more than ever convinced me our new Buddhist movement was a continuation of Ambedkar's own work in the Dharma, the great untouchable leader having in effect asserted the fundamental unity of the Buddhist spiritual community. In no less uncompromisingly than I had insisted on the central importance of going for refuge. This brings me down nearly to the present day, in 1988, remember. It brings me down to very nearly the 20th anniversary of the Western Buddhist order, which we have gathered in relatively large numbers to celebrate. Now that I have traced the history of my going for refuge, however, where does that leave me? Where does that leave you? Where does that leave us? Quite simply, it leaves us, in a sense, exactly where we were 20 years ago, or whenever it was we first committed ourselves to the path of the Buddha. It leaves us going for refuge. We do not, it is to be hoped, go for refuge in quite the same way as we did then, or even as we did last year, or last month, or even last week. With every day that passes, in fact, our experience of going for refuge should gain in depth and intensity, should take place within a wider context and on a higher level. With every day that passes, we should have a more decisive realisation of the fact that we are, each one of us, an arm or a hand of that Avaloka, Avalokiteshra, who is, in the, who is the embodiment of the cosmic will to enlightenment, and therefore the, embos, the embodiment of the cosmic going for refuge. As regards to the relation of the order to the rest of the Buddhist world, let me simply observe that it is a relation that subsists essentially with individuals, and that this on the, on the occasion of our 20th anniversary, we are happy to extend the hand of spiritual friendship to all those Buddhists for whom commitment is primary, lifestyle secondary, and who, like us, go for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, repeating, whether in Pali or any other language, Buddhang Sarananga Chami, Dharmang Sarananga Chami, Sanghang Sarananga Chami, to the Buddha for refuge I go, to the Dharma for
for refuge I go. To the Sangha, for refuge I go. Now and so long as life shall last. Now until the attainment of enlightenment. The wind, the wind was in my sails. It blew stronger and fiercer hour by hour. I did not know from whence it came or why. I only knew its power. Sometimes it dashed me down the rocks. Sometimes it spun me round and round. Sometimes I laughed aloud for joy. Sometimes I felt a peace profound. It drove me on, that manic wind, when I was young. It drives me still, now I am old. It lives in me, its breath my breath, its will my will. Sevenfold Puja. Firstly, worship. With Mandarva, Blue Lotus, and Jasmine. With Mandarva, Blue Lotus, and Jasmine. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. And with garlands skillfully woven. And with garlands skillfully woven. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. So worthy of veneration. So worthy of veneration. I envelop them in clouds of incense. I envelop them in clouds of incense. Sweet and penetrating. Sweet and penetrating. I make them offerings of food hard and soft. I make them offerings of food hard and soft and pleasing kinds of liquids to drink and pleasing kinds of liquids to drink I offer them lamps encrusted with jewels I offer them lamps encrusted with jewels festooned with golden lotus festooned with golden lotus on the paving sprinkled with perfume on the paving sprinkled with perfume I scatter handfuls of beautiful flowers. I scatter handfuls of beautiful flowers. Muni, Muni, Maha Muni, Shakya Muni, Sadhu. Muni, Muni, Maha Muni, Shakya Muni, Sadhu. Muni, Muni, Maha Muni, Shakya. Yeah. 
Salutation. As many atoms as there are. As many atoms as there are. In the thousand million worlds. In the thousand million worlds. So many times I make reverent salutation. So many times I make reverent salutation. To all the Buddhas of the three eras. To all the Buddhas of the three eras. To the Siddhartha. To the Siddhartha. And to the excellent community. And to the excellent community. I pay homage to all the shrines. I pay homage to all the shrines. And places in which the bodhisattvas have been. And places in which the bodhisattvas have been. I make profound obeisance to the teachers. I make profound obeisance to the teachers. And those to whom respectful salutation is due. And those to whom respectful salutation is due. Om Namideva Hri. Om Namideva Hri.
going for refuge. This very day, this very day, I go for my refuge, I go for my refuge, to the powerful protectors, to the powerful protectors, whose purpose is to guard the universe, whose purpose is to guard the universe, the mighty conquerors who overcome suffering everywhere. The mighty conquerors who overcome suffering everywhere. Wholeheartedly also I take my refuge. Wholeheartedly also I take my refuge. In the Dharma they have ascertained. In the Dharma they have ascertained. Which is the abode of security against the rounds of rebirth. Which is the abode of security against the rounds of rebirth. Likewise in the host of Bodhisattvas. Likewise, in the host of Bodhisattvas, I take my refuge. I take my refuge. Namo tassa. Namo tassa. Bhagavato arahato. Bhagavato arahato. Samma sambuddhasa. Samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa. Namo tassa Bhagavato arahato Bhagavato arahato Samma sambuddhasa Samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa Namo tassa Bhagavato arahato Bhagavato arahato Samma sambuddhasa Samma sambuddhasa Buddhang saranangha chami Buddhang saranangha chami Dharmang saranangha chami Dharmang saranangha chami Sanghang saranangha chami Sanghang Saranangha Chami Do Tiampi Budhang Saranangha Chami Do Tiampi Budhang Saranangha Chami Do Tiampi Dharmang Saranangha Chami Do Tiampi Dharmang Saranangha Chami Do Tiampi Sanghang Saranangha Chami Tutyampi Sanghang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Budhang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Budhang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Dharmang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Dharmang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Sanghang Saranangha Chami Tatyampi Sanghang Saranangha Chami Panati Pata Panati Pata Veremini Veremini Sekapadam Sekapadam Samadhyami Samadhyami 
Dinadana, Veremini, Sikhapadam, Samadhyami, Kamesu, Mechachara, Veremini, Sikhapadam, Samadhyami, Musavada, Musavada, Veremini, Veremini, Sikhapadam, Sikhapadam, Samadhyami, Samadhyami, Sura Maria, Sura Maria, Maja, Maja, Pamadatana, Pamadatana, Veremini. Sikhapadam, Sikhapadam, Samadhyami, Samadhyami, Sadhu, 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 Sadhu. With deeds of loving kindness. With deeds of loving kindness, I purify my body. I purify my body with open-handed generosity. With open-handed generosity, I purify my body. I purify my body with stillness, simplicity, and contentment. With stillness, simplicity, and contentment, I purify my body. I purify my body with truthful communication. With truthful communication, I purify my speech. I purify my speech with mindfulness clear and radiant. With mindfulness clear and radiant, I purify my mind. I purify my mind. Confession of faults. The evil that I have heaped up. The evil that I have heaped up. Through my ignorance and foolishness. Through my ignorance and foolishness. Evil in the world of everyday experience. Evil in the world of everyday experience. As well as evil in understanding and intelligence. As well as evil in understanding and intelligence. All that I acknowledge to the protectors. All that I acknowledge to the protectors. Standing before them. Standing before them. With hands raised in reverence. With hands raised in reverence. And terrified of suffering. And terrified of suffering. I pay salutations again and again. I pay salutations again and again. May the leaders receive this kindly. May the leaders receive this kindly. Just as it is with its many faults. Just as it is with its many faults. What is not good, O protectors? What is not good, O protectors? I shall not do again. I shall not do again. Om Marapachanadi Om Marapachanadi Om Marapachanadi Om Marapachanadi Om Marapachanadi Om Marapachanadi Om Arapachanadi 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 
Rejoicing in merit. I rejoice with the light. I rejoice with the light. In the good done by all beings. In the good done by all beings. Through which they obtain rest. Through which they obtain rest. With the end of suffering. With the end of suffering. May those who have suffered be happy. May those who have suffered be happy. I rejoice in the release of beings. I rejoice in the release of beings from the sufferings of the rounds of existence. From the sufferings of the rounds of existence. I rejoice in the nature of the Bodhisattva. I rejoice in the nature of the Bodhisattva and the Buddha. And the Buddha who are protectors. Who are protectors. I rejoice in the arising of the will to enlightenment. I rejoice in the arising of the will to enlightenment and the teaching and the teaching those oceans that bring happiness to all beings those oceans that bring happiness to all beings and are the abode of welfare of all beings and are the abode of welfare of all beings om tare tu tare tu re swaha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare 
to race Om Tare to Tare to race Om Tare to Tare to race Om Tare to Tare to race Entreaty and supplication. Saluting them with folded hands. Saluting them with folded hands. I entreat the Buddhas in all the quarters. I entreat the Buddhas in all the quarters. May they make shine the lamp of the Dharma. May they make shine the lamp of the Dharma. For those wandering in the suffering of delusion. For those wandering in the suffering of delusion. With hands folded in reverence. With hands folded in reverence. I implore the conquerors desiring to enter Nirvana. I implore the conquerors desiring to enter Nirvana. May they remain here for endless ages. May they remain here for endless ages. So that life in this world does not grow dark. So that life in this world does not grow dark. The Heart Sutra. The Bodhisattva of Compassion, when he meditated deeply, saw the emptiness of all five scandals and sundered the bonds that caused him suffering. Here then, form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. Form is only emptiness, emptiness only form. Feeling, thought and choice, consciousness itself, are the same as this. All things are by nature void. They are not born or destroyed, nor are they stained or pure, nor do they wax or wane. So, in emptiness, no form, no feeling, thought or choice, nor is there consciousness. No eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. No colour, sound, smell, taste, touch or what the mind takes hold of. Nor even act of sensing. 
neither ignorance or end of it, nor all that comes of ignorance, no withering, no death, no end of them. Nor is there pain or cause of pain, or ceasing pain or a noble path to lead from pain, not even wisdom to attain. Attainment too is emptiness. So know that the Bodhisattva, holding to nothing whatever, but dwelling in Pranya wisdom, is freed of delusive hindrance, rid of the fear bred by it, and reaches clearest nirvana. All Buddhas of past and present, Buddhas of future time, using this Pranya wisdom, come to full and perfect vision. Hear then the great Dharani, the radiant peerless mantra, the Pranya Paramatma, whose words allay all pain. Hear and believe this truth. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhiswara. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhiswara. Gate, gate, paragate. Parasangate Bodhiswara Transference of Merit and Self Surrender. May the merit gained. May the merit gained. In my acting thus. In my acting thus, go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. My personality throughout my existences. My personality throughout my existences. My possessions. My possessions. And my merit in all three ways. And my merit in all three ways. I give up without regard to myself. I give up without regard to myself. For the benefit of all beings. For the benefit of all beings. Just as the earth and other elements. Just as the earth and other elements. Are serviceable in many ways. Are serviceable in many ways. To the infinite number of beings. To the infinite number of beings. Inhabiting limitless space. Inhabiting limitless space. So may I become. So may I become. That which maintains all beings. That which maintains all beings. Situated throughout space. Situated throughout space. So long as all have not attained. So long as all have not attained. To peace. To peace. Om Mahum Vajraguru. Oh, 
Shanti. Shanti. 